would you rather be sporting these or this? I think I know the answer to that. Let's get rid of these, shall we? Let me tell you, menopause doesn't mean you're any less of a woman, although sometimes you might feel that way. Because of all the challenges it brings, today I want to show you a few proven solutions to a problem that, despite being very common, still embarrasses women and makes them suffer in silence. You probably know where I'm going with this. Yeah, it's incontinence, also known as a leaky bladder. It doesn't only cause us to lose our feminine confidence and daily comfort, but also negatively impacts our sexual relationships. But it doesn't have to be that way. And in this video, I'll show you three natural ways for reducing it or even healing it entirely. And yes, when I say natural, that means no drugs or surgery in the prescription. Hello there, I'm Dr. Anna Kabeka, a gynecologist and obstetrician and women's health expert with over 20 years of experience. I wanna to talk to you about Vicki. She was a 64 year old woman who came to me who a decade earlier, 10 years earlier, she had a bladder surgery for incontinence, for stress urinary incontinence. She was coming to me because she had continued vaginal pain as well as that urgency symptom, needing to run to the bathroom no matter what, and she couldn't tolerate the side effect of the medication she was prescribed. I also want to tell you about Trina, only 49 years old, always having to empty her bladder before she jumped on her rebounder, her absolute favorite type of exercise, as well as going into yoga, or she knew she'd have to leave in the middle of class to go use the bathroom. So those are just two patients of thousands of women I've seen and I've helped who have had this complaint. So let's talk now about the four main types of urinary incontinence. We have this overactive bladder, also called urgency incontinence, known medically as detrusor instability. It's a problem with the muscles. There's definitely a nervous component to that, as well as a muscular component to that and a genetic component. So that's the first type. It's the when you typically have to run to the bathroom, you can't get there in time, and older women tend to experience this quite frequently. The second type of incontinence that affects us, especially as we're getting older, is called nocturia. What does that mean? That means you're getting up at night to use the bathroom once, twice, three times. I've had one client who used to get up six times at night, every night to use the bathroom. That was just insane, it blew my mind. Why didn't we fix that at the first rise in the middle of the night, right? It's really risky as we're older because that's when most falls and hip fractures occur. So we have to fix that. And I'll tell you a, a good way to do that too. The third I wanna talk about is called post boy dribbling. I know, it sounds really bad too, right? It's when you feel like I've emptied the bladder, but now I'm getting up from the toilet and lo and behold, there's a trail after me. And that's very uncomfortable, and it's also a symptom, not just, oh, I was too impatient. It's also a symptom that your bladder's not emptying completely, and we'll talk about that too. That's post void dribbling. Another component of that um, that I do want to talk about, it's not a type of urinary incontinence, it's painful urination. If you're having discomfort or pain when you urinate, you definitely need to get a urine analysis because you may have a bladder infection, something else going on. So we really need to fix that. But often it's also caused, discomfort with urination can be caused by hormonal decline, irritation, and some skin disorders. So get that checked out too, always. The fourth and most common type of urinary incontinence is called stress urinary incontinence. That is when we leak, when we cough or sneeze, like I was telling you about Trina. So cough, sneeze, exercise, laugh, and we don't wanna stop laughing, right? We don't wanna stop jogging. We wanna to continue to enjoy our life. Actually, I received a um, video email yesterday from one of my doctors who videoed her patient who was so excited to tell me that she's been using my feminine cream that I'll tell you about for a year and she used to have leaking all the time when she was running. She's in a running club, 68 years old. And so she had to slow down and stop and constantly um, interrupt her running routine. But now, and it's been over the last year, she no longer has symptoms. As well, she shared this with her running club. 
but it makes a difference in quality of life. So what causes urinary incontinence anyway to begin with? Well, there are many causes, but I just want to talk about a few today, five main causes. First is dietary issues, like just caffeine and spicy foods, and you know that can be a big factor, as well as sugary foods. So those can affect us. A quick side note story is that when my daughter, Amanda, was only six years old, she came to me saying, Mommy, I need D-E-T-R-O-L-L-A. And I was like, what? That was a drug I prescribed to women with overactive bladder. She was watching a commercial and was brainwashed into thinking she needed a drug to help her symptoms of running to the bathroom you know, several times during the day. And I was like, whew, that just blew my mind. I couldn't believe it. Right away, I knew that we had to get control of her diet, not alone, but our diet, and also the way I was practicing medicine and talking to patients. So I said, no, honey, you don't need a medication. You need to no more sweet tea. Now, we're in Georgia saying no more sweet tea to a child. That's a really big deal. <laughs> but no more caffeine, no more sweet tea, no more sugary drinks. That was a really... That made a huge difference in her quality of life at age six. So dietary changes make a big difference. This And food allergies is part of that dietary changes. If you have a food sensitivity, you may have experienced the symptoms of overactive bladder or any of the types of urinary incontinence that I mentioned. Now, the second thing is pregnancy and childbirth. Believe me, I know this. I'm an OBGYN. Not only that, I've delivered over 500 babies and I've had four of my own big babies. Largest was just an ounce under nine pounds, right? So I know this can make a difference, but vaginal birth is so much worth it. Yet women are running and volunteering themselves for cesarean section thinking that's going to make a difference when actually there's only a 20% protective factor and that's only after the first cesarean section. The second pregnancy and C-section, you completely are equal with women who've had childbirth. Now that, that brings us to the third reason why some women do and some women don't have incontinence after childbirth. And there's a genetic component, certainly our collagen, our musculature, the way we're designed, all of those components can really make a difference. The fourth is a natural hormone decline. So as we get older, our hormones decline, and with that, we lose collagen, we lose muscle strength, and that can, make, that can impact us. The fifth is overall health, and if we're on medication. So if we're obese, we're on medications, we have other medical issues, all of those things can be causes for urinary incontinence, right? So we've got to address that. So now let's go into the natural ways, three primary natural ways that you can start gaining control over the symptoms if you have it and prevent it in the long haul, right? Because it's really important that we prevent this in the long haul. For me, having had four children and having had to deal with this in the past has really prompted me, but primarily the number one reason I'm so passionate about this is because incontinence, as I said, is the number one reason caregivers put their parents in a nursing home. I have four daughters and dealt with them as teenagers. I have no plan to give them any additional reason to tuck me away somewhere as when I'm older. So the first way that we're going to prevent and or decrease our symptoms of urinary incontinence is to make those dietary changes. And so let's omit the foods that are stimulating our bladder. Caffeine, sugar, processed food, artificial sweeteners, preservatives in our food, all of those things can affect us and the big food sensitivities, gluten, dairy, um, Oh my gosh, eggs, soy, nuts, certain nuts like peanuts, for instance, can affect you. And for some, it's also eggs. So we want to avoid those things as well if we're experiencing symptoms. And if we continue after stopping those, we need to absolutely do some additional testing and workup and food sensitivities to really address that dietary. So choosing healthy whole foods, my keto alkaline diet, right? Healthy alkaline foods low on the acidic foods and healthy fats, your avocado, your salmon, your oysters. I mean, all those really good 
nutritive foods are important. The second is pelvic floor exercises. I'm absolutely passionate about this. As an obstetrician, I would tell my young pregnant patients, time to start doing your Kegels and you do them until you die because they're important for our entire life. If you do yoga, you are focused on concentrating and pulling up those pelvic floor muscles. And it's important to do no matter what exercises you do and really be conscientious of how you're exercising. So I teach a great video on pelvic floor exercises on my website and you can Google DrAnnaKabeca.com and Kegel exercises and you'll find that video. It's very informative and instructive. Now the third thing I want you to do is supplement. So for those recurrent urinary tract infections, we need to supplement with vitamin C, 4,000 IUs or international units daily, and that can really help decrease your risk of those recurrent infections or irritations to your bladder. Now see how that works for you. Some women with the detrusor instability or urgency incontinence can make it worse. So you gotta figure this out. In that case, we definitely load up on some magnesium and some other ingredients including probiotics. Probiotics is another supplement that I highly recommend if you're experiencing any type of incontinence at all. And you can get that in your diet or you can supplement with it, but you wanna choose really high quality. The third thing that really helps with decreasing our risk for or helping you if you've experienced these symptoms of leaky bladder is bioidentical hormone therapy. Now, one thing that I've used in my clients through the years was different types of topical or intravaginal bioidentical hormones to help improve their symptoms of urinary incontinence for sure, but also pre-surgically. Now let me give you a couple examples. Vicki, who I told you about, a 64-year-old woman who had a history of a bladder repair, and she came into me with pain, discomfort, and frequency of urination. On examination, I noticed a suture that was in the vagina from her prior surgery because the vaginal walls had eroded. Well, this was really significant. I needed to repair that. But before I did, I prescribed her vaginal hormone therapy with testosterone and DHEA, and I brought her back in six weeks later so I could do the surgical repair. Well, lo and behold, when she came back in to see me, not only did she have no more symptoms on vaginal exam, I could not find the suture. She had no more pain with intercourse because as she told me, she was feeling friskier than she had in 15 years. So that was really good news for her, her husband, and I was thrilled with the results. The second woman I told you about was Trina, a 49-year-old who had to empty her bladder before yoga class, before getting on the rebounder, and who was constantly struggling with wearing a panty liner in her sexy underwear and really didn't like it. She started using my topical feminine cream called Jolva, which has DHEA in it, and within four weeks, she had no more symptoms. She recognized that she didn't have to empty her bladder. She didn't have to run out of yoga class in the middle of it. And as well, she was on the rebounder without having to stop and no embarrassing leaks. And she was able to toss those panty liners or pads for, that she was only using for urinary leakage. That's really good news. So those are three main ways that we really want to address and prevent symptoms of urinary incontinence. I couldn't find a good over-the-counter solution for women to help them with the embarrassing urine leaks, vaginal dryness. So I created one. This is called Jolva Cream, and it's perfect for the delicate tissue of our vulva because it's 100% safe and 100% natural ingredients, including DHEA, plant stem cells from the alpine rose, shea butter, coconut oil, emu oil, and vitamin E. It treats not only the symptoms of urinary leakage, vaginal dryness, and discomfort, but also helps you with your libido. So if you'd like to experience it for yourself, be my guest and try Jolva for a week for free. You don't have to spend a cent on your seven day pack, just the cost of shipping. And there's no risk on you, it's ready to send out right away. It is my mission and my dream to get Jolva out to as many women as possible. So once you try it, please let me know how it makes you feel, and I know you'll be happy with it. So share it with your friends. It's time to start the conversation, and we're all in this together. Meanwhile, try out the tips above and let me know how it goes. 